Welcome back, everyone. For those over at the channel memberships, you just got your first video just for channel members only. That's Tesla Cat supporters or higher here on YouTube. If you'd like to be a part of that, click down in the comments. And once you get down, you'll see a pinned comment for me that has a link to join. I'm going to be doing that moving forward as well as over at the Patreon. You guys got your first uh, membership. That's for any membership over there that you are a part of for paying members that you will get content sent over, video content just for you. And there's no ads in there. There's none of this stuff. It's right to the meat. And we talk a lot about the stocks, the portfolios. I'll go over the portfolios in there, some of the thinking behind them and all the plays, of course. When we're putting plays out there, I want to be able to make some videos and give it to you. So over at the Patreon, that link's in the description. We're here on YouTube. So either one, but it was a good thing. So today we're going to talk about one of the uh, purchases I just made, a big one. And I want to share it and go over it. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the other high risk because the the high risk portfolio, I've been sharing the different plays on here. If you've been a loyal follower, you know which ones I'm in. I do videos slowly but surely on all the plays so you know exactly what's in the portfolio. Uh, now, uh, before we get into that, of course, if you have not done it, take advantage of the Moomoo link down below, deposit $100 and you will get five free stocks worth up to 10,000, deposit 1,000, you'll get 15 free stocks worth up to 30,000. Take advantage of that. And now check out Weeble. Weeble's giving you 12 fractional shares for depositing $100. If you have not done this, they have fractional shares over there. So you can buy a dollar's worth of Berkshire Hathaway, which is over $400,000 stock. Now you can own a little piece of it and have Warren Buffett manage your portfolio. Good opportunities. Now, the stock market today, uh, we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to get into the stock I bought, which I think is going to be why most of you want to see it. And so let's just look at it right now. Here you can see the markets up here. They are eh, eh, they're dropping down from where we were. And that's the thing. So once we come in here and I, I reboot this page here, uh, you can see what's going on over the last five days. But I bought this one today. And this is TECS. For anybody that doesn't know this stock, this is a three times shares ETF. And this thing is extreme high risk. And I bought this... Oh, I'd say right around here. And so we got lucky and it was just basic luck that we got it down at these prices. And this thing's come up nicely since then. And over the last five days, and this is one of, and why I bought this is because I do believe that we are going to end up seeing some tough times moving forward when earnings come out. And so let me explain this little piece of the puzzle. I expect starting next week is when earnings really ramp up and when they'll, they'll last for a few weeks there. And what happens is I believe that you're going to see more companies reporting miss, a miss versus the estimates what are expected. I believe the average number, and this is off the top of my head, if I can remember correctly, around 74% of companies meet or beat expectations or estimates when it comes to earnings. And so they usually set that bar pretty low. And that's why you have such a high percentage beating because they know the street doesn't want to see bad news. Well, here's the thing. I don't think estimates are taking into effect how bad the economy really is compared to what's expected. And so I expect that number to come in lower than 74 percent that most, you know, we're still going to have your a lot of companies meeting or beating their estimates. But I think overall it's not going to be 74 percent of them. And I think going forward, you're going to see a lot of companies, and do not be surprised by this, announcing multiple cutbacks. We'll say, you can say, look, we're downgrading our estimates moving forward, and they tell the world. And we might hear of layoffs. You might hear of, of issues affecting them, that the economy is kind of slowing down. And so we have to revise our guidance. And to me, once we have that revision from the companies, and you see some of the bigger names doing it, I think that's when you see another leg down in this market. And the theory is, the theory is, remember, I still have my portfolio set up for one thing. What? A recession. For those following over at the Patreon or here on YouTube, on the channel membership, you know this. I've been loading up most of my family's money into the recession portfolio and the high risk portfolio. We're really going out there. And you know what? If I believe there's going to be a recession, I'm moving the money to where I think it should be. 
and we're going to find out how this works out overall. I do believe with the recession, we'll see the S&P 500 dropping dramatically. Where? Well, let's take a look at the market right now, and you can see uh, how everything's doing. Tesla and NEO are killing it. So the Tesla stock price prediction and NEO stock price prediction that we shared on here a few videos ago, maybe that'll hit. Maybe we will see that 100% up for Tesla that it was calling for in the next 12 months. You never know. 6.75%, it's moving like it used to. And we'll see how it goes. But the S&P 500, this is the one I wanted to talk about. And you can see what happened today. It rose up to about 39.50. I know everyone was loving it. I was as well. But then at that point, you start to see some weakness kicking in. And that's the fear I have that, you know, when you have these big pushes up, that's kind of like I always say, sell on the good and then buy on the red. And so if you were going to take an inverse, like I, I showed you with the TECS, you want to buy that on the, the high. And then if you get down here, you can go ahead and take that quick profit because you made a quick 4% in a matter of a few hours. Or if you're like me, and this is where I'm coming in with this, you believe if we go over the last year that we are going to retest this low down here. And I do believe minimum, minimum, we're going to get back down to 3,600. And I think that, and you can see we kind of topped out here and now we're going back down a little bit. You can have these ups and downs. But we had a new top right here. You had a top here, you had a top here, and you had a top up here. So if you follow these tops going down, they're new lower highs, new lower high, new lower high. And this is just fitting into that traditional technical way of looking at it in a bear market. And yes, I do believe the next low is on its way. And uh, even with uh, even when you look at some of these right here, and you can say, oh, right here. No, that wasn't it. It finally bottomed out here. This could be one of those moments where like, is that a new higher low, Mo? It could be, but I don't think it is. I think what you're going to see with the earnings compression coming up, that this will drop down into the 3,600s. If we can avoid a recession, good news. If we can avoid a recession, and I'm following that data. If I find out we are going to avoid it, I will rotate, but I still believe 3,600. So that's why I think the high risk, inverse portfolio I have should do well. I think bonds would do well. That makes up a lot of my recession portfolio. And some of those other sectors are going to outperform, I believe, moving forward. Thus, the overall portfolio is set up for some headaches out there if the economy does go south. But that's how I'm kind of looking at it, that uh, if we do get down to 3,600 and we avoid a recession, the market should be able to start the next bull cycle earlier than expected. But if we do get in a recession, we're literally in it right now. We don't know for six months because it takes two quarterly declines. Maybe it's Q1, Q2. I definitely think Q2, Q3, some mix of that will be it. And so that's what I'm watching for. If we are lucky enough to be able to avoid that recession, then we'll see markets climb. But I still think we get down to 3,600 maybe one more time, roughly, and then follow the data. Just watch the data. Be like the Fed. Follow the data and see what's going on. Uh, and then if we do not actually avoid that recession, even if it's a mild to medium one, I expect this to get down to 3,300 in the S&P 500. Where are we at? Well, you're talking numbers right here. So we're at 30, say 3,900. I would expect about a 15 to 20% drop minimum if we hit a recession. I think the S&P goes 2,900 to 3,300 if we hit a recession. So that's kind of how I'm playing it. And then once we get down there, I'll be watching what? I'm watching the VIX because I think the VIX will actually pop up to about, normally it gets up around 40 to, to give us an, an idea that we're at, at an end of that, that big sell-off because that means volatility is through the roof. Everyone's panicking. And that's usually what means it's a capitulation moment. They're done. The market's done. Everybody's getting out, they're selling, and that jumps up to 40. That's when we should be buying. It's extreme fear. Everything's bad. And so that's one thing I'm looking at as well. Lately, though, we had some green. It's been trading sideways. We're kind of waiting. But then it, uh, if we go out six months, it's dropped down dramatically. And you can see this. But now you're starting to see it kind of flattening out, almost if you did a little mini regression line moving up a little bit. And so I'm watching these things. I plan on making some money off of it. Uh, we'll see if I'm right or wrong. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I lose money. But today I wanted to share the, with the family what's going on. And remember, for those following, I'm watching these bonds 
And as we come down here and look at these bonds, they lowered again. What does that mean? Well, TMF should be up a little bit. And it was, all right? Not a lot, but it was up. And so over the last five days, if we add in the other days, it was up over, I think it was 16%. And so I'm following that. We'll see how it goes. Remember, if the Fed pauses or pivots, I expect these to start blowing up. And uh, I will be in, I'll be moving around, I'll be active with a lot of these plays. So I'll be watching. Now, if you haven't done it, make sure you get those free stocks from Weeble and Moomoo down below. Deposit $100 or more for either of them, get those free stocks. Then come on over and join me at the Patreon link in the description. You get the new members only videos over there and members only videos here on YouTube for, uh, for Tesla Cat members or higher. And it, it's it's interesting. We're going to be adding a lot more of that. It's right to the point. It's the kind of videos I know a lot of people, uh, they they prefer. No ads in there or anything else. And that's what I like to do. So I do appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.